Um, there's been a bit of a problem at Granville uh, Station. Lloyd, what, what's the problem here? Well, uh, what we know so far is that a rail bridge, a train bridge at Granville has collapsed. We believe three people have been hurt. Uh, the police rescue squad are on the way. That's all we know at the moment. One of those days, huh? Meantime, extensive delays at a uh, lot. There's just bodies everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. I thought it was just the carriage under the bridge at first, but then I had a look on the other side of the bridge at the locomotives on its side, and one carriage, all you can see is the floor of it. It's on its side. It's had the top ripped off it. The, the others have jackknifed into it. It's <laughs> just... Ma'am, have you got somebody in there? I think so. Can I go and see? Can I go and see? What makes you think there's somebody in there? Well, it's the 8 o'clock train from, from Parramatta. Yeah. She always gets that train. Who's that? Jenny. Your daughter? Yes, and she hasn't arrived at work. Can't go down there. Oh, my ears. Journalist, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. The carriage from its normal height has been compressed to a couple of metres thick. It compressed to a couple of metres thick? Yes, it's just an absolute mess. It's come straight down on a carriage here. Uh, most of the carriage is underneath the bridge here. The news in brief read by John Logan. An overhead road bridge has collapsed on an interurban train in Sydney's western suburbs, and as many as 200 people could be trapped. The Public Transport Commission said a short while ago the locomotive and one carriage is on its side, and another two carriages are trapped under the wreckage of the bridge. The accident occurred on the Bold Street overpass at Granville and involved the nine minutes past six train from Mount Victoria in the Blue Mountains. Gas is escaping from ruptured mains and electrical power lines have been brought down. Some injured have already been taken to Parramatta Hospital. All available police and ambulance personnel are on the scene. More details as they come to hand. Well, it's really pathetic here at the moment. There are relatives starting to arrive from, from you know, up the line and from down the line. Many of them are you know, just completely hysterical. I saw one lady, tears streaming her eyes, ran up to a, a, a badly injured person on a, on a stretcher and just pulling his arm and saying, what time did it leave? What time did it leave? Front carriage, were you? Yeah, front carriage. I was underneath the seat and there was... I must have been knocked off for a second. I don't think I sustained any injuries because... It, it you was covered in blood. What happened? It was, I pulled somebody out. I think, I don't know, the two people in front of me, one, one bloke had his ear off and he was, he was in bad shape. And it's now eight minutes to ten. I'd like to tell you once again that the blood transfusion service in Sydney has made an urgent appeal for donors of all types of blood. I'll repeat that, all types of blood. And I was there a little before nine o'clock. There was this great scene, and I could see straight away how bad it was from the air. This gave me a pretty good picture of it, really. But before I'd arrived, almost all of the rescue squad had arrived, and the whole squad was there in an action and I just had time to see them and say what a frightful mess this is. I remember asking were there any alive and there were people coming from everywhere. Once they told me there were live people here and some of the rescue squad were already burrowing down underneath the main slab, cutting their way in with their equipment. Some of them were under there. They don't stand waiting for instructions. The first one there, if he can, he start to work to save life. They're, they're all conscious of getting people out quickly, that's the name of the game. And they're all very brave people and they've all been in very dicey situations. I couldn't believe there'd be anybody alive underneath. And then I went in underneath and found this hell on earth. The slab had come down and the people were crushed down to within about, at that stage, about 14 inches of the deck of the carriage. And I came upon Bill Fay halfway down the train with that girl and what had happened was as they were crawling through they thought nobody was alive there she said I'm alive and smiled and they took nine hours to cut her in but I had a bit of a look around and still couldn't find Joe Beecroft he's the chief of the rescue squad I don't know he must be a rabbit he actually got underneath the train and up underneath where the slab abutted to the ground and I reckon there was about six inches around there and a doctor got through with him too and they I found a man there alive and they took several hours, about six hours to get him out and he's quite all right. And then we've got this bloody gas. Every one of these particular trains carries two bottles of LP gas because they go up the mountains. And this was to have a tremendous effect on them. If I use an oxy torch, it's bang on that I'll start a fire. And that really, that to me, grabbed me in a, in a great sense of frustration. So everything had to be cut with uh, carborundum sores and 
we were in nine hours cutting these girls out. Then the slab came down. The slab shifted down two inches, even while our fellows were wedged in there, pinning two of our rescuers and crushing one of our porter uh, power outfits like butter. And, and this is when one of the doctors wanted one of our fellows to leave. He wouldn't leave and neither would the doctor, because we got a few surprises. People speaking to us that later died, and an old fellow that said, don't worry any more about me, he said, I'm, I'm done for it, should you rescue the young people? Imagine that, he died. So I couldn't use oxy, and then I start to think, well, the only way is to cut it up with jackhammers and lift it out by slabs. And the moment we did that, we could knock this side of the bridge down. Here is the national news from the ABC, read by Jeff Sapper. Police have put the death toll in the Granville train disaster at 80. 43 men were killed, 36 women and one female child. A total of 83 people were injured, some seriously. At this stage, police have released 31 of the names of those killed. Rescue workers at the crash site this afternoon removed the 80th body from the wreckage. Workmen are now attempting to clear the railway line and one track is expected to be opened by tomorrow night. An ABC reporter at Granville, Bob Worth, said that when the last body was dragged from the wreckage about four o'clock this afternoon, an air of calm settled on the scene. The cranes and compressors used to lift the concrete bridge support from the wreckage stopped and several hundred policemen formed up alongside the railway line in neat rows in the hot sun. Uh, yeah. Granville death toll rose to 82 today with the deaths of two more victims in hospital.